China is seeing a radical transformation of its armed forces, the biggest in the world. Manpower has been cut by half, but the budget has increased sixfold to well over $100 billion a year. Now, for the first time, the Chinese army has opened its doors to foreign cameras. I have been invited to follow two British officers on an exchange programme with one of China's top military academies. I'm not quite sure what to expect. It will be a week full of challenges. Uh, this isn't my uh, usual Friday afternoon. And a rare glimpse inside an organisation undergoing fundamental change. If you want to get peace, you must be strong. I believe we will have an unforgettable time together. Jason Johnston and Richard Levin are recently commissioned officers from the Royal Military Academy at Sandhurst in the UK. They've arrived in China to take part in something unprecedented and quite unique. Have they ever been to China? No. Both of us are our first visit for both of us. They are the first British officers ever invited to take part in an international cadet exchange organised by the People's Liberation Army of China. They're going to spend a week living and working with Chinese cadets at the PLA University of Science and Technology in Nanjing, a thousand kilometres south of Beijing. It's a good opportunity to come and experience something firsthand, especially a, a country that's emerging as, as, as of somewhere very important uh, globally. Richard Levin is 29. He received his commission at Sandhurst two months ago. He will be sharing this four-man room with 21-year-old cadet Lu Zhao Shen. I read a book uh, named Harry Potter. Harry Potter, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. You read Harry Potter? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about it. In a theme that will echo throughout the week, Lu is keen to find out about what British cadets at Sandhurst are allowed to do. Are there many rules in Sandhurst? There are lots about, of uh, In our school, uh, there are many rules. Uh, we we forbid him to make a uh, girlfriend. Uh, How about you, Richard? Me? No, I don't have a girlfriend. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> 23-year-old Army Air Corps officer Jason Johnson has been partnered with 21-year-old Chinese cadet Xiao Ji Liu. Together, they will take part in a prestigious military competition known as the Jin Wu Cup later in the week. I will be as the interpreter. Okay. Yeah, it'll be interesting to know what other um, international cadets are going to be in our team. But I think uh, you are the best. <laughs> you are the best. <laughs> yeah, no pressure. <laughs> this international military exchange here at the People's Liberation Army University of Science and Technology in Nanjing, I should say that to give you a sense of scale, there are 8,000 students here and this is one of 63 similar enterprises across China. This is the first time that Western TV cameras have been this close to the People's Liberation Army. When these cadets graduate, they will join an armed force 2.3 million strong, the world's largest. We are today 再过二十年，他们就可能成长为我们各国军官的中级和高级的军官，就会成为我们军队和一个国家的栋梁。Let's look forward to the extraordinary performance of the international cadets. The university has invited cadets from ten countries. The purpose, ostensibly, is to promote cooperation between armies. 然后呢，相互结识，是吧？相互了解。the People's Liberation Army was the spearhead of Mao Zedong's communist revolutionary movement that seized power in 1949. 
And reflecting that history, the PLA remains technically part of and accountable to the Communist Party rather than the state. And it was in that role, back in 1989, that the army was deployed, clearing Tiananmen Square of student protesters. Images of the incident, seen around the world, have dominated the way the PLA has been seen by many in the West. Now, a quarter of a century on, China has grown into an economic superpower, and its army has started its own radical transformation. It's six o'clock in the morning. I'm not really awake yet, to be honest. First off, it's half an hour of drill. Only then is it time for breakfast. But the exercises are far from over. Almost everything is done in formation, which is not quite how they do things back at Sandhurst. I can't imagine spending four years of my life marching to breakfast, lunch and dinner. I'd say that'd be quite a challenge for most people at Sandhurst. Meanwhile, the canteen is eerily quiet. Usually, we, we allow no speak uh, uh, in the tea, in the canteen, and uh, it's the discipline. After breakfast, the cadets are given a tour of the campus facilities, including a battle simulation room. This may look like computer games, but it is part of their training. How long have you been doing this? Uh, this is been a new idea. How long have you been doing this? This is a new idea. This is a So this is a new idea. This is a new idea. In the last few years, the PLA has embarked on a sweeping modernization program. According to official figures, its military budget has grown from $20 billion in 2002 to a massive $114 billion last year. And many analysts reckon the true figure to be much higher, although Chinese military spending is still dwarfed by that of the US, which spends at least four times as much. The money has been spent on the latest weapons systems, ballistic missiles, fighter jets, drones, and even its first aircraft carrier. In those terms, this is the world's largest military expansion. Ren Duo Liliang Da is what Mao used to say. The more people you have, the more power you have. And that has been the doctrine that Chinese military has worked by for a very long time. But times are changing. Technology becomes more important, and ways of working and ways of thinking have to change. To allow the PLA to focus on defence and military matters, internal security is now mostly dealt with by the police. And in a departure from previously dominant military thinking, the PLA has downsized, reducing personnel by almost half. It's a whole new philosophy. Fewer people, more technology, greater military efficiency. But to pull it off, they must first learn how to breed a new type of soldier.我爸爸妈妈都是自己做生意 That evening, the cadets are rewarded with a night out on the town. <laughs> they have a rare time to go out. 
you like coming out? Uh, yeah, so I, I think every young man can like, love it. But the cadets arrive late to the return meeting point, which does not go down well. The next morning, the foreign cadets are taken to one of China's most important memorial sites. This international military exchange is happening here in Nanjing. Now, that could not be more significant for many Chinese people since it is the scene of one of modern China's most significant military humiliations. In December 1937, the Japanese Imperial Army captured Nanjing, then the capital of China. Over the following six weeks, they tortured, raped and burned their way through the city, killing in the process as many as 300,000 people, mostly civilians, men, women and children. The graphic nature of those images, the act of killing itself, the killers enjoying what they were doing. Now, it's hard to overestimate the impact of this event on Chinese sensibilities. That is why we have such kind of you know, tragedy here, because China was weak. So that's why we need to change. That's why we go to the army. I want to build a better world. With the massacre at Nanjing and the military failures that led to it still very much in mind, even now, building a more effective army is a clear priority. And here, the PLA is seeking lessons from abroad. West Point Cadet Frank Chen of the US Army tells me his Chinese hosts have been very keen to find out how their training compares to his. Every time they get the opportunity, they pull one of us away and they ask us, hey, was his training hard? Does his training develop leaders? So they were keen to know from you whether you found it challenging? Yes. Maybe the level of interest from the Chinese in what is currently the world's leading military power, the US, should not be so surprising. As I walk around the campus, it's obvious. If imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, then the Americans should feel sincerely flattered. Quite a lot of what you see here, oddly, looks quite American. The uniforms look quite American, the routines are quite American. That fascination with and emulation of American military, however, runs quite a lot deeper than that. The American and British militaries also bring something to the table which the Chinese do not have, recent combat experience. When you're marching, how do you carry it? Just on one shoulder? Recent wars in Iraq and Afghanistan have taught British and American forces many tough lessons. We patrol like this, okay. Oh, okay, okay. with the rifle ready in the shoulder, and if we needed to fire, it would just, this would go all the way down. And we could oh, okay, okay. The, the, the last time China went to war with another country was a brief conflict in Vietnam, way back in 1979. No? The foreign cadets shadow the daily activities of their Chinese counterparts. Military life everywhere is highly regimented, and so it is in China, only more so. We only have five minutes. You can use eight. Uh, yeah. <laughs> For Chinese cadets, almost every minute of every day is planned and scheduled. I should go. There seems to be very little questioning of, of why things are being said. Um, so, uh, certainly cadets at Sandhurst, if they get given 
uh, you know, told to go and pick up leaves from the parade square, there's a lot of, oh, why do we have to do that? Whereas here, you, sh you just go and do it. 对于中国的孩子，传统的就是说这种管理方式对我来说很，就是、说很有裨益，人口毕竟多。All cadets are expected to use their evening hours to study, and at 11 p.m. sharp, it's lights out. It's day five of the exchange, and this morning, the academy is holding a debate. Cadets from each country are invited to speak on a subject of their choice. Uh, what do you think is the most difference between the military cadets of China and between the cadets from the Sandhurst? The biggest difference is that at Sandhurst, we uh, are granted a lot more freedom. It's a theme picked up by one of the Chinese officer cadets, who asks Lu about the high levels of discipline and relative lack of freedom allowed to Chinese cadets. How do you deal with it? Of course, obey. Obey it. Just obey? Yes. <laughs> but Lu's answer doesn't entirely satisfy his questioner. We, we needed to have our own ideas. We needed to have our own mind. No, no. We should, we should own our minds, but firstly, we should obey our rules. Wait, absolutely. Thank you. More controversially, another student ventures to wonder about how China should handle militarily its new role as a global superpower. If you want to get peace, you must be strong. Uh, the weaker side can have no qualification. Uh, we must uh, take measures to, to uh, invent uh, advanced uh, weapons. And so it is that China has more recently started to flex its more modern military muscles. It has clashed with neighbours over resource-rich waters and strategically valuable islands. But it is the issue of Taiwan which remains the greatest potential flashpoint for conflict. China remains committed to an armed response if the self-ruled island ever declares independence. As China becomes a much more significant regional and global player, its military is having to adapt. But with 2.3 million people under arms, the biggest standing army in the world by some margin, the question is, is the PLA a threat to Western and other interests? Brigadier Simon Levy is the British defence attaché in Beijing. Do you regard them as a threat? A threat to whom? Well, to British or Western interests. If you look at Chinese, his, Chinese history and their, and their own foreign policy, they do not believe in intervention. And I think uh, that in itself probably gives you the answer. Um, if you look at all the places they, that they operate in the world, they don't operate from a military footage in other places apart from within their own country. They're interested in defence. <音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音> That evening, Richard is invited to the home of Colonel Wen Wei, a professor at the university. He says the army has changed dramatically since he joined in 1993. <laughs> What's more, he says, there are lessons to be learned from abroad.
It's the day of the PLA's most important annual cadet competition, the Jingwu Cup. Seven military universities across China are participating. And for the first time ever, foreign cadets have been invited to compete. This is the international contingent in these two rows, um, each consisting of three international students um, and seven Chinese cadets. Okay, squad two, squad two, move out. The competition begins. The first challenge is orienteering. Jason's team need to find and tag 10 electronic touch points spread over 15 square kilometers. Jason's first task is to secure the area. The premise of the competition is that we're at war and that we've been dropped behind enemy lines. But they are getting off to a bad start. The squad leader is struggling to make sense of the map. There's three different people looking at the map, trying to decide where we are. Running out of time, they decide to split into two groups, each responsible for locating half the electronic touch points. The cadet in charge, though, is still prevaricating about which way to go next. It's a decision you have to make as a leader, and he just, uh, he just took too long. Jason's team manages to locate four electronic touch points and return to the rendezvous with five minutes to spare. Come find the other group? Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's good. But the other half of the team is nowhere to be seen. And it looks like they, they haven't made a bag of time. Um, yeah, maybe. Eventually, they do make it back. Jason is starting to realize that amongst the Chinese cadets in his group, even allowing for their relative youth, practical skills often do not match classroom theory. They, they do need a little bit more practice before they can, yeah, before they can uh, get to each point effectively and efficiently. Jason told me that while the exercises were familiar, they were not all as realistic as they might have been back home. And in his view, that comes down to China's lack of recent combat experience. The navigation exercise was almost identical to what we do at Sandhurst, just an hour longer. Um, casualty extraction, deal with the casualty, get it to the helipad. Um, was, that, was that the same as you would do? Um, it was different in that the, the helipad were, or the heli landing site um, where you have to extract the casualty to was 20 metres away from where the casualty happened, which is unrealistic. Later that evening, the results of the Jin Wu Cup competition are in. The overall winner of the cup scores a first place with 486 points. For the young cadets, it's a huge personal achievement. Jason's group scored 121 points and came in second to last. Both our teams did very poorly um, in that we both our teams had three uh, foreign cadets that were struggling with the language. So has it been a worthwhile trip? It's always good to extend the hand of friendship, uh, especially when uh, they've been so cold in the past uh, between both of us. The exchange week has come to an end. As Jason and Richard prepare to leave, they reflect on their time here and what they have learned about their Chinese host. In terms of their views on what this place is all about, uh, perhaps what officer officership is all about, um, still to me seem quite naive and, and very similar. But I think that after the four years they have a fifth year, and that's when they go off and learn about uh, command uh, and officership. And maybe that's, that's where the, the change happens. I think fitness-wise they're at a similar standard as far as officership training and leadership goes. I think they're at a lower standard. I personally think it's because they're not given um, the responsibility to, to develop that leadership.
国际化视野更开阔了。You know,、uh, Richard, if we have 缘分 luck, miss luck, we will see you next time. Give me a hug. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, I love you. Yeah, thank you very much. These cadets may well one day have leading roles in their country's armed forces. They have gathered here to understand how their counterparts think. Invaluable lessons, maybe, now that China, with its new model army, is poised to play a far more significant role in world affairs. Thank <laughs> you.